Good morning and welcome to Begin in the Word. Today we're continuing our series of studies on the seven churches of Asia, the information we find in the book of Revelation chapters 1 through 3. We left off our study at Revelation chapter 2 and verse 10. We continue reading there, uh, skipping down towards the end of the verse, Be faithful until death, and I will give you the crown of life. In the previous study, we talked about the fact that that was a call for saints to be faithful to the Lord, even if it cost them their lives, even up to the point of dying. And now we see the promised reward, a crown of life. Let's think about what that would sound like uh, against their cultural and historical backdrop there at Smyrna. Smyrna provided a crown of honor for citizens for various achievements. That might be civil achievement or athletic achievement in some competition. A variety of things could garner them a crown of honor, but those crowns didn't last very long. They were usually made of plant matter and they would soon fade. Uh, something else about the a crown there against uh, the cultural black backdrop of Smyrna, Smyrna was known as a crown of the region because of a circle of buildings that ringed the summit of Mount Pegasus, like a diadem. So at a mountain there uh, in the area of the town, there was a circle of buildings up there. And from a distance, that looked like a crown over the city. So they were very proud of that, proud of that look. And they, they saw themselves as a crowned city. So the mount itself was sometimes known as Smyrna's crown. So the city saw themselves as being rewarded with this crown of beautiful buildings and the arrangement uh, thereof, and that's something that they took pride in. So this idea of a crown as a reward would really resonate with those citizens as they saw themselves as a city rewarded with the honor associated with this crown and, and, and then the various crowns for civil and athletic achievement. It's interesting that one ancient writer said, Apollonius by name, he advised the citizens of Smyrna, it was more pleasing for the city to be crowned with men than with porticos and pictures. So here Apollonius is speaking to the idea that they were proud of themselves just because of the crowned look of that city. And he's saying, look, there's something more important than just a physical arrangement of buildings. And by the same token, we saw that the crown they would receive for physical achievement was a temporary crown that would soon fade. Here, Apollonius is saying that crown of building is, it's not what really matters the most. There are other things in life that matter more than just those buildings. And so the idea here is Christ is promising a crown of life as a reward that's better than any crown they might know there at Smyrna. And the New Testament often repeats the promise of an enduring or eternal crown. And you see a few examples listed here on the screen. 1 Corinthians 9, 25, 2 Timothy 4, 8, James 1, verse 12, 1 Peter 5, verse 4, all of which speak of that eternal crown as a reward for faithful Christians. So against the backdrop of a city that was caught up in their temporary and temporal crowns, Christ comes along and promises something better. So it's definitely worth it to the Christians of that day to stay faithful to their task of serving the Lord. Observe now what he said in Revelation 2 and verse 11. At the close of this letter, he who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. He who overcomes shall not be hurt by the second death. Now, when I want to ask you to notice Reading what was written in this letter equates to hearing what was said. So understand the value of receiving a letter that's inspired by the Spirit and reading that letter. And when you do that, you hear what it says. And that's what we have with the Bible. That's what we have with the New Testament. The Spirit testified, Nehemiah 9 and 30 says, by what the prophets wrote. When we go back and read the writings of the prophets there, we're hearing the testimony of the Spirit. When you read the letters that were written to the Asian churches, you're hearing what the Spirit says. So today, if you want to hear the Spirit speak to you, read your Bible. That's as plain as I know how to make it. 
Some people are waiting to hear some mysterious voice in their ear or in their mind. And I'm telling you today, according to the scripture, if you want to hear the voice of God, read his book, read the word of God. That was an admonition to those saints so long ago and an admonition for us today. Notice he also said, he who overcomes will not be hurt by the second death. What is the second death? Well, in Revelation 21 and verse 8, he describes what happens to sinners who live in rebellion to God. He said, the cowardly, unbelieving, abominable, murderers, sexually immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. So the second death, according to the Lord, is being cast into the lake of fire. Well, in Jesus' teaching in Luke chapter 16, verse 22 and 23, there in the story of Lazarus and the rich man, he indicated that the wicked experience being cast into the lake of fire immediately after their death. So here he's saying to them in their lifetime, shortly to come to pass, near the time of John, if they overcome, they could have the confidence that when they died, they would not be cast into that lake of fire. They would be spared from the second death. To be a servant of Christ, a person might endure many difficult things in our service to the Lord. But nothing is as difficult as parting this life and learning that you're not right with God and suffering his eternal wrath. Now, for Christians that are being persecuted, this is an especially important message. Life may be difficult and the tribulations may be many, but be faithful, even if it costs you your life. And if you're fortunate enough to be able to serve Christ in a situation where tribulations are much more mild, such as earlier when there were just people speaking against or blaspheming the saints at Smyrna, have the confidence and know that whatever trouble you endure in this life, once you pass this life into the realm beyond, you're going to enter a realm where you avoid God's wrath and instead enjoy a sweet reward. And we serve the one who, remember from earlier in our studies, holds the keys of hell and of death or of the grave. He holds the key and someday he'll unlock that grave and bring our lifeless bodies out reunited with our spirit and brought home to be with God forever. What a blessed promise we have in God's word. Thank you so much for joining us today to study the word of God. And as we begun today in the word, I pray that you live out today and every day in the word of God. Thank you and God bless.